Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video, I discussed taking the front end of Starship and turning it into a lander for Mars specifically, and I should have clarified that the lander is going to go this end first into Mars' atmosphere, which is why we need these flaps, because otherwise the surface area down here is not going to be sufficient to slow us down and we're going to smack into the surface really hard. So these flaps hopefully add surface area that will help to, they're basically really big air brakes. And that is the goal of them. They're not supposed to control us. They don't have any control capability at all. Uh, so yeah, one thing that they are supposed to do is make sure that the center of mass well, we, we probably want the center of mass over here, as that the center of lift is further back than the center of mass. I might force, I might have a descent COM thing, I don't know. The problem here is basically that we have the huge uh, payload in there, and I, I don't have a bay door, I have these variants for now. And if I take the payload out, if I take the payload out, the center of lift has gone down there for some reason. Okay. Uh, let me close it up, maybe. Okay, it's supposed to be like this. <laughs> so, uh, the question is, uh, so this this way it'll go bottom in first, as it should. Uh, the question is whether, and we, we could fuel it up more, and that pulls it down a little bit. Uh, but the question is, and actually it's interesting that when I remove that, the center of lift goes there. That's peculiar. But anyway, if anything, you'd think that the extra drag over here would pull the center of lift even further this way. But, yeah, that's an interesting thing with these variants. So, how far off can we have it? And can I still keep the 100 tons, or is it going to flip all over the place? And can it slow down even with these flaps? Will far be satisfied that they're supposed to do something? I don't know. And then we have the engines. Uh, they need to work. I'll try it half fueled because that's what we were trying before with the launch we didn't actually get it to orbit that's gonna be a problem but if I have to reduce the payload that will basically help solve that problem in the end uh, so yeah let's see if I can bring it down around Mars with a hundred tons and if I can't I'll have to adjust that but I'm just gonna cheat it into orbit over there I'll see there are colliders on that I don't know about that tank that we had with Starship in the previous video, but this certainly can stand on those. Now I am going to try to set it in orbit around Mars such that it's going to be in line with the same Valles Marineris location that I had been testing with the Maru Q, or the Mini Q. There's a whole business of it capturing into orbit and everything that's also important. So yeah, basically we were trying to land right there, and I'll have... But I'm just going to manually land, so I'm not going to try to have a KOS script do it. So I'm not going to be actually managing to land there. The KOS script is necessary for that sort of precision, for Mars's atmosphere. Okay, Valles Marineris. The reason we want that is because it's lower, so the atmosphere is thicker and will help us slow down. As long as we don't like hit the edges or anything. So again, we're only half full here, but that should help us slow down because we're lighter. Not by a whole lot though, 189 tons still. Far, who knows, uh, uh, reference area is 96 meters squared. Well, that's definitely more than, I mean, the radius is 4.5. So 4.5 squared, let's say, is 20. And pi times 20 is like 6, let's just say 60, okay? Um, so this surface area is less than that, but I would figure that these combined would be more than that. So it's tough to say what's going on far exactly. Maybe it's reading this area? Possibly. There we go, that's what the plumes look like right now. 
And I'm gonna just set it to zero. We're a little bit far north, but again, I'm, I'm not trying to hit the target precisely, so... We'll just hope that we end up somewhere low. Of course, the mini Q is a lifting body, so... It even has some aerodynamic surfaces on it. So it's a lot easier for it to come down than this... Uh, than the time this will have. Okay, we are in the atmosphere of Mars. Well, currently not slowing down. We're actually speeding up, technically. Uh, we've got some overheating. Uh, maybe I should put some heat tiles after all. Let's see how it does. We're slowing down, but we're getting into thicker atmosphere. Okay, well, I'm going to temporarily write in higher heat tolerance figures, and I'll add a bit of mass and add heat... Well, wait a minute. It wasn't supposed to be 773 Kelvin. Okay, I'll just fix that. Okay, I've theoretically increased the heat tolerance to 1200 Kelvin, and we'll see how that goes. I think we were sort of borderline last time. It was going up on the temperature fairly slowly, <laughs> maybe. We'll see. Let me try 20. We might overshoot, though. Yeah, we will overshoot. Uh, well, let me do... Uh... Yeah, we'll we'll just land somewhere else. Let me try and at least get it to within daylight. Well, I mean, it seems like we're ending up over there anyway. The problem with the periapsis, like with 20 kilometers or stuff like that, is that the ground is higher than that. The, the ground is almost never close to zero here. So that makes judging it a little bit complicated. I guess I'll just take this trajectory. As you can see, 125 kilometer start to the atmosphere. We're 93 kilometers above the ground. Okay, we are slowing down, but we're actually pretty low right now. So that's not good. Low above the terrain. We have certainly passed Valles Marineris. Though, actually, there's more Valles Marineris over here, isn't there? We might end up over here, but I, I think we're aiming for like a stretch where... It isn't very low. That's weird. There's like, there's an upper valley there and then this lower one there and we happen to be right on the little stretch between them. Great. Again, we want to land at a low point because the atmosphere will be thicker there. Yeah, we're going super duper fast here. And the train is coming up. We certainly don't have enough delta V to slow down like this. There is some overheating. I definitely didn't put too much heat tolerance. It's starting to overheat there. Now I'm gonna try and arm the parachutes. Oh, you've even got plasma effects there. Uh, we're gonna smack into the ground. Those parachutes are not going out. But note that the flame effects are not occurring on those flaps. So our animated flaps are not... even though they have colliders, otherwise when I click on them like this, it wouldn't show the information for the spacecraft. So they have colliders, but they're not getting the flame effects. So, what do I do about that? <laughs> um, if I 
like reverse the animation on it and have them start out extended, then we're gonna get enormous drag going up potentially if that's read as the only position that they can be in. So even if I retract them, they pretend to be extended. Um, let's just put really big flaps on hinges and see what happens, like actually deploy them with the Infernal Robotics hinges. If it's like this, I feel like it's going to start trying to spin on me, but... Well, I mean, that's the idea. That was... well, I mean, actually the flaps I created bend back a little bit, but... That's the idea. I guess the one good thing is that it didn't flip. Uh, so it is aerodynamically stable. It's just that it doesn't slow us down enough. And the flaps aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So place your bets and will this work? I guess I'll reduce the mass strength multiplier. But one flaw is that we're, we're just carrying a lot of mass down. So that has to be considered as well. Okay, um, well they're very reluctant to actually extend, but they're going out there. Let's see if they stay attached to us at all. Okay, ignition. Starting the retro burn a little bit earlier this time since we overshot. Um, oh, they're flopping. Hmm, well, okay, that makes sort of sense. If the air is hitting them, it'll be fine, right? Probably the acceleration is not going to be that much. I'm on wondering if I should extend the flaps on the model itself. Let's, let's just not. We'll just rely on these to make the test a little bit more consistent. Oh, oh, they're flopping, they're flopping. Uh, okay. Maybe it was more of a fizz warp thing? We're slowing down at least. Now we're falling short, so they're doing something, that's for sure. I wish mine did, <laughs> but without little hinges, if it's just an animation, doesn't like it. I wish I knew how Infernal Robotics actually did its thing. Oh, oh, it's flapping. Oh no, it's turning around now. Oh, they're going all over the place. Uh, this is not good. Eek. Okay, maybe I should... What, what if I extend these as well? Now, those other flaps can't collide into these because it doesn't self-collide. I should have... Maybe... Auto strut? Well, now it's rotating. I should probably auto strut it earlier. Well, we're still pretty low and still going fast, though at least we're slowing down. Well, those are out. And they probably shouldn't have gone out right there. I armed them, but they were going out based on altitude. So this time we fell way short. Again, landing in there would be a little bit easier. We can't have our flaps flapping around like that. Okay, let me revert and I'll adjust the descent location. The initial descent burn location. And I guess we'll try auto strutting. I don't actually know if It'll extend properly if I auto strut, let's say to grandparent part, which should still be 
screw apart anyway. Um, yep, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be good or not. They should all have the same. Yep. Could have rigid attachment, but I'm pretty sure that wouldn't allow the hinge to work. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, one more try. Maybe I'll wait until after the descent burn in order to extend the flaps. We don't need them flapping around all over the place. Oh, but that would be a nice test of the whole attachment, I mean the auto strutting. Okay. Ignition. Ah, uh, they're still going back. Uh, so they're probably going to flex. Let me try a rigid attachment on, now that they're extended. Tough dealing with these hinges, that's why I don't use them a whole lot. But the aerodynamics sure seem to like them better than just having it as an animation on the body. I think we're gonna overshoot. I mean, I could use some thrust here. That doesn't do a whole lot. Well, the flaps aren't flapping around. It's good to see. Okay, let's say I do that much. I spent about 100 meters per second. Oh, I guess I'll extend these flaps too. Oh, 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 that might be just fizz warp, but still not a good sign. Come on, rigid attachment. Okay, we're slowing down, but we're getting low. And I'm not going to hit a valley. I think we're going to end up on the other side of this, which is going to be rough. Oh, suddenly it gets all flappy. Right there, it suddenly gets all flappy. I've had this before where at a certain altitude, things just suddenly happen. And that's... we're right, we're right there. Uh, let's try and pop the parachutes before we get to the other side of the valley, though. I don't know if they'll hold. The thrust, the engines absolutely do not gimbal. <laughs> so, okay, well, that didn't work. I mean, these added panels, these wing pieces certainly work to help slow us down. But then suddenly it all goes haywire. Maybe I should put some token gimbal on the engines as sort of a differential thrust thing. Yeah, we're not going to survive. Hmm. Well, that's the state of that. What can I say? I'll have to come up with some sort of technolo technological solution to the flap problem. We want flaps. Either that or we have some sort of inflatable sort of thing to help slow us down. A balut. But we would have to have a reusable balut. Well, I'll get your thoughts on this peculiar situation. But it sure seems like the flaps ought to be able to slow us down. It's just that at a certain point in the atmosphere, the, the additional flaps we have here flap around more than we need them to. And then the ones built in, of course, don't do enough, even though they're the same size. Now, one other thing is that we're half fueling this. If we add full fuel, it'd be heavier, which is bad. But we could slow down some more. And that would help also with the parachute deployment. Might make the little flaps more stable at that altitude. And another thing we could do is reduce the payload. 
So those are our options, add more fuel, but then we have to launch with that as well. So that's a pickle. Or we could just, maybe we could just refuel this in orbit. Instead, we could have the payload, but just have no fuel in it. And then in orbit, when we're refueling the tank of Starship, you know, well, the tank that we're going to dump, uh, when we refuel that thing, we can refuel this as well. And that would solve that problem. I think we could carry that up anyway. So I think that's what I'll do for the launch problem. So the launch problem, we, we don't have to worry about. We'll just refuel this once it's in orbit. But uh, do we need to cut down on the payload so that I can actually enter safely? Or can I get some solution to this flap problem? Well, I'll take a look at what I can do. Maybe I can cut off the flaps from this. Will they work better when they're separated and still have the animation, or do I really need to implement something like Infernal Robotics on them? In which case, maybe, I mean, the hinges themselves don't flap around, right? So if these flaps are their own separate part and act like a hinge, would that be all right? But I have to figure out how to do that. I've never implemented uh, Infernal Robotics part before. So I'll have to look into how that might work out. But it sure seems that they have more physics significance. Anything attached to one of those hinges has physics significance anyway. Or more drag than these. But does the hinge itself have that? Because I'm going to implement the flap as the hinge. Does the hinge get more drag when it's extended? I don't know. It's complicated. So anyway, this design is still a work in progress, obviously. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.